Hey, this is Ocean K with an overview of a rack extension that I call the EDS-06S, which is an electronic style drum synth. Now it's actually six parallel independent mono synths in one device. So you can use a single EDS-06S for six separate drum hits, or you can make a single drum hit with six layers of sounds or anything in between. So let's take a look. Each row of knobs and buttons here represents one synth or one channel of sound. So your six rows, these are your six channels, and every channel has identical functionality. So let's look at the channel uh, uh, one and look at all the, its parameters. First we have a preview button. This is just a preview of the current sound that we have in that channel. And then we have note in. This is the note that you play on your keyboard or sequencer or controller to trigger this channel. Right now this is set to C1, which is typically, typically the kick drum in Redrum or Kong. And when I play C1 on my controller, I trigger channel one. Now if I put both channel one and channel two on C1 and pr uh, play C1 on my keyboard, both channel one and channel two are being triggered. So this is one way of layering sounds in the EDS-06S. Just have them trigger off of the same note in the sequencer or controller. So uh, next we have the source wave oscillator. I've included 49 waveforms with the EDS-06S. These are cycles that I've used before and have just found particularly useful or interesting in creating drum synths. The first few are our basic sine, triangle, uh, saw, square, and noise, and then the rest are just more complex waveforms. Now we have a pitch section. Uh, you of course can uh, coarse tune and fine tune, and the drop is the, the distance and the speed of the pitch drop over time. We've got a basic envelope section with attack and decay. And then we have four effects here. We've got a filter, distortion, reverb, and delay. For the filter, we've got a 4-pole, 24dB uh, ladder filter, often called a Moog filter. It's got four modes, a low pass, a high pass, a band pass, and a band reject. Uh, and of course, you can set the frequency and resonance. For distortion, we've got uh, three types of distortion, a drive, a digital foldback, and a bit crush. For reverb, we've got a nice little Schroeder reverb here, so we've got the size and decay of that. And for a digital delay, we've got the volume of the delay signal, the time of the delay, and the feedback of the delay. Now, these four effects, uh, by default, are processed in this order. The filter, then distortion, then reverb, then delay. But if you wanted to change the order, you can with this routing pop-up over here. This routing pop-up allows you to define the effect routing. So all mathematical possibilities are here, so you can route this in any order that you want. Well, now every channel has its own LFO. Uh, and uh, the LFO has seven waveforms, uh, and you can set the rate for the LFO. And then there's the destination. Uh, this lists all of the parameters in channel one that you can have the LFO effect. So, for instance, if you wanted to have the LFO uh, change the pitch, right, we can set the pitch here, we can uh, drop our pitch, we can bring up the decay, and if we play this... <laughs> This LFO is affecting our pitch. So each LFO can control any parameter, except the LFO, of course. The LFO can't manipulate its own uh, parameters. Uh, but it can manipulate any other parameter in that channel. Uh, there are three uh, sync options. There's free running, so there's no sync at all. There's re-trigger, which means that every time channel one gets a trigger signal or a gate in signal, the phase of the LFO is reset. And then there's tempo sync. Uh, and if you select tempo sync, then the rate knob becomes uh, turns into tempo divisions. So that's the LFO. And then every channel has its own output. We talked about the effect routing. Every channel has its own aux send and return. And so this is the wetness of the return signal. And then, of course, volume and pan.
Uh, in addition, every channel has a solo button. So if you've got a beat going on and all six channels are playing and you wanted to just tweak channel one and just uh, hear channel one, you just set the solo and now only channel one plays. And you can solo multiple channels. So in this case, only channels one and three would play and two, four, five, and six would be muted. So that's the front of the EDSO6S. Let's take a look at the back. Of course, there's a master uh, audio out, and this is just the sum of all the channels. But every channel also has its own set of CV and audio connections. We've got a gate in, so uh, in case you wanted to hook up a redrum or a Kong uh, or some other device to control the EDSO 6S, you just go into the gate in. There's also a gate out in case you wanted the EDSO 6 triggers to uh, trigger some other envelope device or some other uh, external device. There's also uh, here are the mono aux uh, send and returns and then every channel has its own separate audio out in case you wanted to post process this channel or those hits. There's also the LFO out so our LFO can control internal signals it can also control external signals through CV. Then here are uh, CV ins every channel has five CV ins and these CV ins can be routed to any parameter, including the LFOs, in that channel. So just like the internal LFO could control the pitch cores, we can also have an external CV signal control the pitch cores. So every channel has up to five CV ins controlling five different parameters per channel per device. So there's a lot of CV connectivity and a lot of sort of interesting manipulation you can do with the sounds. So that's the EDSO 6S. Uh, of course, every uh, parameter is remote enabled and uh, automatable. There are a bunch of presets to show you uh, some of the range of sounds that the EDSO 6S can make. Uh, and there are some audio demos on the Propeller Head shop page so you can see what the EDSO 6S can sound like. So I hope you like it. Thanks so much for checking it out.